I'll just I'll just go over to uh, and tonight I'll have dinner over here. That'll be easy enough. And then I'll have uh, you've got it. Uh, will you call her and tell her that uh, at sometime this afternoon that I'm meeting with the quadriad? You understand? Sure, but I think we should wait till sort of late. No, about four o'clock. All right, around about, about, about four thirty or five. Okay. But, uh, I wanted to know that I'm having the you know, Secretary Connolly and the others, and I'm going to have a bite with them at the right. quadriad. I mentioned it yesterday. If yes. You call. Yes. And we'll get that done with. And then tomorrow I've got the brand dinner. The mm -hmm. following day is Wednesday. I'll just. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes, please. Ms. Woods, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, fine. Uh, and the boat is free Wednesday night. Well, I may use it. So, Wednesday. if you want to go, that's so. Uh, it's free every night except tomorrow night is the night that Laird has it with some congressmen. Well, I'm busy tomorrow anyway. And you're busy, so that's. Well, uh, that's right. Well, we'll see.
Yes. Yes. Watch, please. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Rose. Yes, sir. Uh, any development? Uh, no, I haven't heard any more yet. I have a good reason for calling, and then I'll say that I just heard yeah. what you had to say. Fine. Well, I'm going into the railroad meeting, now, the union lead meeting, so I'll be back and I'll call you about 45 minutes. Huh? All right. And then one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, because that Lieutenant Governor Reynolds was yeah. sort of a, I really think maybe we should send flowers for that, don't you? He's only was 34. And he's a Democrat, of course. I think well, that, I know he's a Democrat. But it's perfectly all right. He's that very wealthy Reynolds family. Yeah, but it's perfectly all right. Sure, it should be and something Hope should be sent. put out a beautiful statement on him. I just yeah. thought maybe flowers yeah. would pay off in the long run. Oh, of so course. sound political. We should always should. Always should. Yeah. And fine. Yeah. Okay. 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 And just call and then let me know. But uh, but. Well, if she sounds like you ought to be there, do you want me? To let you? Well, I'll I'll talk to you. Oh, not that I ought to be. I'm not going over because yeah. you know I can't. I I am now. I am tied up now. Yeah. And I got rushing at six o'clock. Yes, right. I saw that. <clears throat> George Schultz, please. Thank you. Hello. Mr. Schultz, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I, uh, I'm i glad you weren't as depressed as uh, most of the quadrat had today. That's sort of a gloomy session, oh, isn't it? it was terribly gloomy but and unnecessary. I, uh, Connolly, I must say, uh, brings some a uh, beat. But what the hell is the matter? Uh, I mean, understand if it, uh, if the... Uh, if if the prospects are uh, are that uh, dire, then uh, maybe we better all uh, turn in our suits and run for the hills. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. Uh, you you feel that they overstated it a bit? Well, I think that, of course, yeah. in a sense, uh, they're they're uh, having it both ways. That is, if yeah. the expansion is going to lag, yeah, then the yeah. inflation problem will be less. Yeah. Uh, so that. Uh, uh, you, you can't say both. You can't say both that it's going to lag and yeah. inflation is going to get worse. Our evidence is that that if anything has happened to inflation, that problem is in better shape. And but do you look at Arthur's figures where he he takes, of course, all of the, the deflator and shows it's actually gone up? I guess that's the only page I saw. I suppose that that's that's the other side of it. Is it? Well, I think the the inflation problem is a real problem to worry about I, as you know yeah, I've yeah. felt that way mm -hmm. I think the dimensions of it are in terms of what our budget does and what our what our monetary policy does on the um, on the wage front I, I was stimulated by the session to get a little project going on trying to forecast what the what the wage and labor cost picture is going to be like in the next year and a half, and I think that can be done within reasonable limits. What I was going to suggest is that not only get the cost what they're going to be, but let's see what settlements we're really talking about. In other words, I think when you get it down to that, then, then you don't just talk in general terms, mm -hmm. and then you talk to the industry, all right, now here's what we're talking about, and this is what we're going to do in each one. You know, dissect the problem as you right. did do it exactly. to an extent. The other thing is that... Uh, that uh, what about Arthur's point about the, uh, the the businessman? That is that they that he has an he has such a such basically a lack of confidence, and that's why and that that's never been the case before, and so forth and so on. Is that is that true? Is that maybe it is? I don't know. Well, the businessmen are very um, unstable in a sense. That is, they they uh, and they didn't used to they be. Get, yeah. They get, no, they always have. They, I didn't. Well, my so point is that I think to go and I tend to. I have always found yours of businessmen are always that way. Well, I've, I've never seen they, they get into this mood or that mood. On the whole, right. their mood is improving. I think, and you think uh, it is. the business council, the tone of the business council session of whenever that was, about three weeks or so ago, 
was much better than the previous fall, and I think it reflected the fact that they could see their profits were improving pretty sharply. The, uh, yeah. They are all kind of, um, they just have an obsession with this wage business. Yes. And I think we need to, they tend to blame all their power. They tend to blame all their problems on the wage thing. And, and lay it out. Now, I, I just was, just before I came, uh, I just I came down to Bob Haldeman's office. Just before I came, I was looking at a, a National City Bank um, letter and sort of a little discussion that they printed up. And a lot of the discussion is exactly on our line. And then there's one place where a fellow says that those who are criticizing the 1065 are more likely to be wrong than, than those who who advocated it. And they go through exactly this uh, line of reasoning that we've talked about before of the uh, impact of increases in output per man hour on labor cost and the uh, the future of that. And, uh, and so on. So I don't think that we're without uh, people who who have that view. As far as the, yeah, I can't believe I can't believe that the whole uh, business community reflects that. I think that what has what happens, George, is that people like Arthur and Paul hear from only those that are bitching. <laughs> that's my that's my view. Well, you you always get. I talked this morning by chance with a guy who was head of. Uh, of the armor division of Greyhound, the former armor company. Yeah. Oh, and um, I didn't even know it was. I, I ran had so it. after he uh, got through what he wanted. I said, "Well, how is your business going?" He said, "Oh, it's great, terrific. Said, hmm. We're we're having a terrific time." Said, of course, a lot of other people apparently are having trouble, but we're doing fine. Um, you find more and more people who say that. The um, so that they they see what they're doing and it looks all right, but then they hear all this talk around, and it gives them the impression that other people aren't doing so well. Now I think the two places where you see a cautious attitude in business are, on the one hand, they're not going in for plant and equipment expenditures, as Arthur pointed out. Yeah. And the other is that they're being very cautious about building inventories. That's pretty clear. Right. But. Um, if the sales keep going at the rate they are now, uh, they, they've just got to start putting in this inventory because they're running out of stuff to sell. And once they begin to get that feeling, uh, the, uh, the investment business will come along too, and then that plus uh, consumer sentiment could add up to a tremendous, tremendous boom. And the inventory picture has just got to change. No, no way for it not to uh, mm -hmm. not to come into uh, yeah. The, play. the retail sales thing didn't concern you as much as it seemed to. Paul wrote a rather depressing memorandum on that to me, but you don't think it. I mean, the fact that the May the May figure he said April. yeah he said it was he said it was disappointing because well I uh, think that's probably it is a yeah. lot disappointing. But you don't expect it to go up every month, huh? Well, it it, does, yeah, it, is, it is at an extraordinary level right now. The um, and they keep revising it, you know. They revised April up by a very substantial amount. Um, and the most solid information we have on sales is these big independent uh, chains, chains, Sears and Boards and Pennies and all those. They're up pretty, pretty sharply. The, uh, so there's that. I, I think on the unemployment, Paul kept referring to unemployment just constantly as the sign the expansion wasn't going right. Yeah. That's true. There are two things, however, that ought to be said about it. One, actual unemployment has declined by a very large number. I don't have it right in mind, but it's like uh, half a million or so uh, in those four months that he was reciting. It's actually declined a lot. Now, seasonally adjusted, it has been more or less stable or slightly rising in the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. uh, but the decline is there, and these are months when there's a fairly substantial seasonal factor applied. And these seasonal factors aren't aren't uh, all that sure. exactly right. Uh, so that, uh, at any rate, autumn, actual unemployment is declining. The second thing is that that we have a uh, had an unusually large buildup in the labor force, a 
associated with the release of people from the armed forces. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, if we hadn't had that, we'd have an unemployment rate of about five and a half percent. Well, that, yeah. that doesn't make it any better. And we no. certainly need to get these veterans into jobs and so on. I agree with that. But I don't think we should allow the existence of that fact to get us into such a dire frame of mind. Well, okay. So well, I don't. Well, uh, we won't throw in the towel. I don't. Well, I said to them afterwards. I, I don't like to be a minority of one all the time. But yeah. But um, gee, the costs of uh, going in for a wage and price control system. Well, at a time when we uh, I have to listen out of war yeah. and so yeah. on, and they, they, considering the well, what what Arthur was saying, a new economic policy. My point is, I don't think that's a new economic policy. I've got to be shown that it is. I think it's an old one, mm -hmm. isn't it? Is it new? It's <laughs> it certainly isn't. Uh, uh, that's the point. Uh, well, we let him take uh, a hard look. Okay. Okay. So. Hello. It's Mr. Ehrlichman calling you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Mr. Yeah. Mr. President. The Attorney General's called a couple times about these New York Times stories, and he's advised by his people that unless he puts the Times on notice, yeah. uh, he's probably going to waive any right of prosecution against the newspaper. And he is calling now to see if you would approve his uh, putting them on notice before their first edition for tomorrow comes out. Mm. I realize there are negatives to this in terms of the vote on the Hill. You mean to prosecute the Times? Right. Hell, I wouldn't prosecute the Times. My view is to prosecute the goddamn pricks that gave it to them. Yeah, if you can find out who that is. Yeah, I know. I mean, uh, could the Times be prosecuted? Uh, apparently so. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They, uh, on the other hand, they're going to run another story tomorrow. Right. But and just uh, wait till after that one. Well, his his point is that um, uh, he feels he has to give them some sort of advance notice, and then if they go ahead in disregard, why then uh, yeah. he, uh, there's no no danger of waiver. But uh, if he doesn't give them notice, then it's almost like entrapment. Uh, we sit here and let them go ahead on a course of conduct and don't raise any objection. Well, could he wait one more day? They have they have one more day after that. I don't know. I don't know. He apparently feels under some some pressure to uh, either decide to do it or not do it. <laughs> Does he have a judgment himself as to whether he wants to or not? Yeah, I think he wants to. Uh, you might want to give him a call and talk with him about it directly. Because I'm, I'm not very well posted yeah. on this whole thing. How do you feel about it? Well, uh, I'd, I'd kind of like to have a cause of action against him in the sock in case we needed it. I'd hate to I'd hate to waive something as good as that, but uh, I don't I don't know what the uh, ramifications would be in terms of the hill. Oh hell, it isn't going to affect the vote, in my opinion. Just mm -hmm. would you want to take a call from him? And oh yeah, I'll I'll call right. him. I'll call him. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yes, please. Attorney General, please. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. President. The attorney what is your advice on that uh, time thing, John? Uh, you would you would like to do it? Uh, I would believe so, Mr. President. Otherwise, we will look a little foolish in not mm -hmm. following through on our legal obligations. And uh, has this ever been done before? Uh, publication like this, or no, no, no. Have you, have, have, has the government ever done this to a paper before? Oh yes, advising of their. Oh uh, yes, we've done this before. Have we? All right. Yes, sir. Uh, I would think that. How, how do you go about it? You do it sort of low key. Low key. You call them and then uh, send a telegram to confirm it. Mm -hmm. And say that we're just uh, we're examining the situation, and we just simply are putting you on notice. Well, we're putting them on notice that they're violating a statute because yeah. we have a communication from yeah. Mel Laird as to the nature of the documents. Right. And they fall within right. a statute now. Right. I don't know whether you've been noticed it, but this thing was uh, Mel was working. Henry Henry's on the other. I just he just walked in. I'll put him on the other line. Go ahead. 
Uh, Mel uh, had a pretty good go up there before the committee today on it, and it's all over town and all over everything, and I think we'd look a little silly if we just didn't take this low-key action of uh, did Mel, them about the publication. Did Mel take a fairly uh, hard line on it? Uh, yes, he <laughs> gave a legal opinion, and it was a violation of the law, which of well, course puts us out for yeah, we have to get. Well, look, look. As far as the Times is concerned, hell, they're our enemies. I think we just ought to do it. And anyway, uh, Henry, tell them what you just heard from Rostov. Well, Rostov called on behalf of Johnson, and he said that it is Johnson's strong view that this is an attack on the whole integrity of government. That if you that if whole ca uh, whole file cabinets can be stolen and then made available to the press, uh, you can't have orderly government anymore. Well, and I, he said, if the president defends the integrity, any action we take, he will back publicly. Well, uh, I, I think that we should take this, uh, do some uh, undercover investigation, and then open it up after your McGovern Hatfield. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got some information we've developed as to where these copies are and who they're likely to uh, have leaked them, and the prime suspect, according to your friend Rostow, you're quoting, is a gentleman by the name of Ellsberg, who yeah. is a left winger that's now at the Rand Corporation, who also have a set of these documents. Yeah. So. Uh, Subpoena them, Christ, get them. Uh, so I would, I would think that we should advise the Times. We will start our covert check, uh, and after McGovern Hatfield, just open it up. Right. Go ahead. Does that, does that agree with you? Yep. All right, sir, will do. Yeah. Right. Yes, please. Mrs. Nixon, please. Yes, Mr. President.
Yes, sir. Mr. Rebozo, please. Yes, Mr. President. Yes, please. Can we bring Tricia, please? Yes, Mr. President. Hello. I have Tricia. <clears throat> Hello. I have Mr. Rebozo for you now, sir. Please. Holloman, please. Thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I had an idea that uh, you perhaps have already thought of, but uh, it occurred to me that this is something we might pull off if you get Colson, Magruder, and all the rest really to zero in on it. Why don't you start a campaign through letters and and at the, at the highest levels, too, like Don Kendall and others could call people to maybe have NBC have a rerun of the wedding mm -hmm. in prime time. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think they've already started doing it. 
because we were. Have they, yeah. But what I meant is, if you could have a fellow like Kendall and uh, right. some of their big advertisers right. call, pick one network, zero in on them, have the big advertisers say, "Gee, this was a fantastic thing. Everybody's talking about it. You ought to rerun it. We urge you to rerun it." Just that, don't you think so? Yep. Because uh, from all accounts, everybody, uh, George Charles was saying, even Mrs. George Meany said she sat up and listened and saw it three times. You know, we done. ABC, NBC, CBS. But I can't emphasize, Bob, that if it were the Kennedys, it'd be rerun every night for three weeks, you know. But uh, I really think this ought to be done now. And uh, who else could we put on this? Uh, who could who could really work on that? Oh, and we ought to try to get a major network to do it. Just pick one, one major network. That, uh, maybe NBC. They're the ones that are a little goosey at the moment. Yeah, I, that, that doesn't make sense. And they did the, they were the pool camera and so forth, and and just let NBC run it. But they've got to be, they got to get letters, they got to hear from top people, they, mm -hmm. like Colson can, uh, you know, stick it to them. What do you think? I think it's a very good idea. And uh, run it about Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Uh, because I, I really think a hell of a lot of people, the women all want to see the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Good. We will and, do it. And nothing really is negative about it in, in terms. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because we uh, the reactions I have during the day are really rather astonishing. That's a total people, plus all the way. People that you would least expect it from. Well, put it to Colson. He'll figure out some devious way to get at it. Right. Okay. okay. Yes, please. Colson, please. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Congressman President. Ford, please. Yes, Mr. President. Yeah. Mr. President, I have Mr. Colson for you. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir, Mr. Well, President. I was thinking on our uh, this uh, uh, New York Times thing. Uh, what the, that maybe you could generate some support from some of our our constituent groups on this. You know, uh, like for example. Uh, I think veterans and uh, uh, yes, sir, and uh, a fellow like Meany ought to pop up on this one. You know, mm -hmm. I mean this, and also I think that on the congressional side, that what is really needed here's a great opportunity for a young congressman or a vigorous congressman and or senator or so to really uh, go 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 all out on a thing like this. You know, now they they have the privilege of the you know they they're what they have is uh, of course. Uh, they can say anything they please uh, on the floor, uh, and even though the case is going to be in the courts, right? We're going to be stuck with it. But on the other hand, uh, uh, we can't say much. But uh, but I, I think it's very important to 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 build a backfire on these people. Understand? I I personally think that if we cast this in the right direction, Chuck, this could backfire on the Times. I oh, think. I think absolutely. They're playing to their own constituency now. We've got to get across several points. One, it's the Kennedy Johnson papers, mm -hmm. uh, basically. That's what we're talking about, the Kennedy Johnson papers, and that gets it out of our way. Second, it's a family quarrel. We're not going to comment on it. Yes, sir. But what we have is the larger responsibility to maintain the integrity of government. Wholly unrelated to the papers. And uh, wholly unrelated to the integrity of government, like as Roger said in his press conferences, he had inquiries from foreign governments today as to whether their papers were... Uh, classified, or you know, right, and that uh, this also involves a. Uh, it really, it really does involve this. I mean, it really involves the ability to conduct government. How the hell can a president or a secretary of defense or anybody do anything? That's right. And uh, how can he make a contingency plan if it's going to be taken out in a trunk and given to a goddamn newspaper? Well, I don't think there's any question, Mr. President, that it'll. Uh, my own feeling is that it will backfire against the New York Times, and we can help. To generate this, I, as a matter of fact, we have a meeting going on at the moment that I well, that, that I came right. out of to talk to you. But all right, fine. Well, then go ahead and meet. No, no. The the purpose of it is to uh, generate some editorials in the yeah. other newspapers that are highly critical, like the Chicago Tribune, ought to give us a good play. The New York Daily News should. Sure. Well, uh, Hearst papers refuse to print it. That's right. And they subscribe. They ought to take it on. But the papers, the newspaper establishment, ought to come. They've got to say whether they're going to approve this kind of thing. Also, I think a network ought to step up for this one. Well, strangely enough, one of the uh, most outspoken fellows in the meeting that we've just been holding on this very subject is Ray Price, who thinks that uh, 
does he? The well, newspapers are, the, thinks the New York Times is totally irresponsible. Well, he's a decent man. That's the reason. He's a man of integrity. That's right. And, but I, uh, uh, we can certainly get the veterans groups. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I think some of them should, they ought to put the cast this, they, listen, the, the main thing is to cast it in terms of doing something disloyal to the country. That's that, right. This risks our men, you know, just uh, all that sort of thing. Secret uh, the things that uh, aid and comfort to the enemy. I mean, after all, uh, well, Jesus, I, it's a, I think the Times position is indefensible. I think that uh, it's it's distinguishable from any other case in that here we went to them and said, you can't publish that. It's a violation of security. And they said, the hell with you. We're going ahead and publish anyway. So we 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 would have been very, very remiss in our duties had we not taken whatever legal means were available to prevent it. And right. uh, I think we, I think you'll find a great deal of popular support for uh, if we can generate. Now, they're, they're running the line, Chuck, of right to know. We raise that with Price. Ask him, how do you answer right to know? That's, of course, a goddamn code word, right to know. The public has no right to know secret documents. Well, we've been... I don't want to know. No, of course not. And uh, you can make the point that, that right to know does not include things which will compromise the, either which the security will of the country. Which the country. And, and right and, and freedom of the press does not is not the freedom to... Uh, destroy the integrity of the government to print uh, well it, it, there's never in these kinds of issues mr president uh, you never get into the argument of, of degree it's a, you're nah. you're either a little bit pregnant or you're not that's right and if you if it were the battle plan for the withdrawal of troops next week that could subject boys to attack well, there'd yeah. be no argument about yeah. it. Now, the yeah. integrity of the system as a whole is at stake. That's right. You simply cannot allow a newspaper right. to publish classified if documents. If they justify this, then in any future case, then the publisher of a paper will put himself. That was really what Alger Hiss did, you said. That's right. He put himself on a higher pedestal and said, well, the Russians are entitled to know this. And he passed the information. And then, and the New York Times, essentially, was among the papers that supported him in that. That's right. Now, the point is that here, what the Times has done is placed itself above the law. They say the law provides this, but we consider this an immoral war. It's our responsibility to print it. Now, God damn it, you can't have that thing in a free country. No, that's irrelevant. And the right to know issue does not really come in there. Well, we'll pour it on. We'll, uh, we'll pour it on. We're coming some, up with. Get uh, some congressmen stirred up. We'll get the Congress yeah. and some editorials and, and, and our, our groups. Good. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. President, yeah. on Congressman Ford, uh, he left the office about 10 minutes ago, and they didn't know whether he was going straight home or not. Yeah. Do you want me to try to reach him? There was No, I'll call him tomorrow. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, if you could get errands? Um, no, I'll try for him. Try for Congressman uh, Errands. All right. All right. Yeah. Mr. President, uh, Congressman Aarons has gone to the Sequoia this evening. Oh, that's right. They have a party. Uh huh. Okay. Let it go. Thank you. All right. Please. Ehrlichman. Thank you. Hello. Mr. Ehrlichman left about five minutes oh, ago to get route home. Attorney General. All right. Yeah. Attorney General. Yes, Mr. President. I wondered uh, if you had any uh, success with Rogers. Yes, he's agreeable to do it. We've uh, got yeah. uh, people from Defense, Justice, and his uh, counsel over there, Stevenson, working on it. Good, good. And he understood the point and uh, was perfectly happy to do it. And he'll get out a sort of a general statement of some sort. You know? Yes, sir. It will not uh, be limited solely to the yeah. foreign affairs. Interest. I think what is very important in this is to find a way to get some strong language, like a massive breach of security, things of that sort, so that we can get something in the public mind. We're not just interested in making the technical case for the lawyers. But exactly. Something where they can see what is really involved here is uh, irresponsible, you know, use some really high-flown adjectives. That's what I'd hope you can get some people to work on that. Uh, we will, and of course, Bill has the understanding that it'll be sent over to the White House to be looked at before it goes out. All right. So your phrase coiners and word makers yeah. can yeah. get a crack at it. Well, I'll tell you, John, it's uh, one of those fights where you don't know whether you you don't know how it's going to affect you, but boy, it's one we had to make, and by God, it's one I enjoy. These, these bastards have gone too far this time. <laughs>
don't you think? It is certainly my opinion. You had to do it. And the important thing is to work at it like you've suggested to try and structure it so that the uh, import of it and the nature of it gets through to the public. Right. And I believe that um, uh, the press is going to be reasonably fair on this. I don't mean the Times and the Post, but I mean the rest of the press. Hmm. I think uh, I don't know. I think they'll understand how far they have gone. Yeah. Well, my God, they're going to understand there. There's a, there is no paper in the country that's for us. We're going to fight it. Okay. Thanks, we've, John. We've got a good judge on it, uh, Murray Gerfine, who is. Oh yeah. Tom Dewey's. Uh, I know him well. There, and, smart as hell. Yeah, and uh, he's new and uh, he's appreciative. So <laughs> good. We ought to work good. it out. Yes, please. Secretary Rogers, please. Thank you. Yes, please. Would you get Mr. Butterfield, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. Secretary Rogers, uh, sir. Yeah, hello, Mr. President. You had a long day. <laughs> so, boy, I started at 8 o'clock with a congressman, and I've been going like a chicken with my head cut off. But I uh, wanted to tell you, I just... Uh, got a chance to go over the uh, press thing. I just think you couldn't have done it better. Mm -hmm. And I think it was particularly effective was what you said about the fact that uh, some foreign uh, governments have raised questions about the security of their own cables and that sort of thing. Right. Because, God damn it, it's true. Right. How can we, uh, how can they, uh, they wonder if uh, if we just allow a wholesale uh, publication of declassification, I should say. Did you know that the documents... Uh, with regard to Pearl Harbor, have not been de declassified yet. Mm -hmm. Hell no. Isn't that something? No. And this, this thing is, uh, uh, we can talk about somebody placing themselves above the law and all that, but on this uh, statement thing, they, my feeling is that first, I cannot say anything, I mm -hmm. feel, because That's it's right. in the courts. I think you can, solely from, a, as a, you know, Sure. A foreign, can you, don't you think so? Sure. I'll be glad to say anything that would be helpful. Well, that's right. Tonight, could I ask one thing? Uh, I don't know how they got the seating arrangement, but uh, I really about talk myself out with Brand, I think, and uh, maybe I think I'll try to, uh, when we talk, we'll engage the three of us. We'll just sit, sit and, you know, talk around. My, I, I don't know whether you're on his right or left or however. Okay, I'll try to do the talking. <laughs> I, I, I ran out of stuff to talk to him about, too, you know. You know, I know. It's just, uh, it's the, well, he, the, the subject, the only subject left is Vietnam, and I, uh, yeah. you want to talk about that tonight, so we'll, uh, we'll talk to him a little about Vietnam. You know, okay. I just looked at the television. That my, the picture came over pretty good in television. Oh, did it? Good. Good. Better. But uh, the... Uh, Damn it, they never carry the good things. I said when they talked about this thing, I have McNamara mm -hmm. papers, I said that I was not going to get involved in, in passing judgment on it. I said, we've got other things to do. We're trying to get this nation out of war. Yeah. I said, we. what I would hope that when the President Nixon leaves office, we can have a study made of how we got the United States out of Vietnam. Uh, good. And uh, also, as I say, basically, this is a family quarrel. We've, that's and right. I, I think the papers could well be called the Kennedy Johnson papers is what they are, you know. That's right. Not the McNamara, basically. It's McNamara and Clifford. Yeah, uh, that's right. And uh, I told the boys here, just call him Kennedy Johnson, you know. That's good. It's a really a shameful, I, shameful. Problem. I just, I just can't really see how the Times could do it. It's a deadly. George Hurst told Bob Finch, you know, they are the, they they are the Times uh, mm -hmm. syndicate in California, and he made the decision there not to print it because he, mm -hmm. he considered it not in the national interest. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it would be interesting. I told the boys to check around with the other Times clients to see how many of them might have done the same thing. Yeah. That's uh, that's uh, that's very damn uh, uh, good of old George to not to do that. Yeah. I hope this judge we got in New York is all right. He he uh, granted a temporary injunction. I mean, a well, you know who it is? Yeah, his name is Mary Gerfine. I know him well. He's Dewey's man. Yeah, he used to be in the office. We just appointed him. I know it, but and, he's uh, also pretty liberal. A little liberal, and he's uh, I'm mm. sure would like to cultivate the time, so he'll have. <clears throat> Well, he also may be thinking of going up, too. Yes. And he damn well better act well. <laughs> okay. All right. See you later, right, Mr. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Butterfield, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Alex, give uh, Senator Cooper a call, if you would, and mm -hmm. tell him that uh, uh, we 
that uh, we had invited Senator Keating to this, uh, former Senator Keating, the ambassador to this dinner tonight, All right. and that uh, to arrive, and that the president would very much like for him to come too if he could join him. You know, what I mean, the, the party would, uh, if it doesn't interfere with his party, they would have to leave about eight ten over there. Oh, I see, Cooper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just invite you know. Well, John Sherman Cooper. Yeah, he has accepted. He's uh, coming? Yeah, remember you mentioned that the other day, Mr. President. Said well, that, then, he's giving the party for uh, Keating. See, that, that's odd, well, isn't it? Yeah. Call, call Cooper and tell him that Keating is I will. invited and that, uh, right. that, uh, that, I, that, that we wanted him to know that right. we were giving, that uh, we didn't want to interfere with his party, but since he's coming, maybe the two could come together. All right, sir. I sure will. Can you get me, uh, Mr. Barr, B-A-H-R, the uh, assistant to Chancellor Brand? Assistant Chancellor of whom, sir? Of Brand. Yes, sir. Ask my office. They know how to get him. This is Mr. Kissinger. Yes, sir. Hello? Dr. Kissinger? Yeah. You are. Hello? Yeah, Henry. Egon, how are you? Thank you, sir. Very good. Uh, Egon, uh, ich sprach mit dem uh, Präsidenten yeah. und ich wollte, uh, uh, let me say it in English yeah. because it's a little easier for me. Uh, he, uh, he, I'll be quite honest with you because sometimes psychological things mm -hmm. make an impact. Mm -hmm. He had the impression that yesterday the Chancellor in his toast was really playing very much for his domestic uh, situation without saying one graceful thing about, you know, his reception and what support you've been getting from us. Mm -hmm. uh, and he felt that the remarks about Vietnam were certainly very ambiguous. Uh, you know, we didn't ask you to say anything about it one way or the other. And I just wondered, Egon, as a friend, whether it isn't, wouldn't be good if he, when he met with the press, Today and with the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, he could make some positive statements about the relationship that has developed. Oh, darf ich Deutsch sprechen? Ja, bitte. Ich bin ganz entsetzt. Ich ich weiß nicht, ob es stimmt. Ja. Ich kann nur sagen, was der Eindruck des Präsidenten war. Aha. Also ich bin etwas bestürzt darüber. Wir haben wir haben lange über diese Tischansprache diskutiert. Und der Kanzler sagt, ähm, äh, erstens, wenn ich also diese, diese Vietnam-Geschichte, das war nicht, war nicht zweifelhaft gemeint, ja. ähm, erwähne. Und dann sagt er, wenn ich sage, dass wir, die, wenn wir auf dieses Jahr zurückblicken, dass da eine besonders intensive Zusammenarbeit gewesen ist, ich hoffe, dass er dies nicht missversteht, dass das eine Anspielung ist auf den Kanal. Yeah. Ich habe ihm gesagt, nein. Ich glaube, das wird, das wird also alle Leute, die dort sitzen, werden das sehr allgemein verstehen. Er sagt, hoffentlich missversteht das nicht der Präsident, dass ich mich hier ganz besonders intim zeigen will nach außen. Yeah. Ja. Also da war genau die umgekehrte Geschichte. Ja. Yeah. Well, okay, wie this... immer es sei, I, I, you know, I can only say what the impression was, yeah. and what I would uh, recommend, uh, you know, as a friend, and yeah. this is not in any sense official, yeah. uh, if the Chancellor could find an opportunity while he's in this country in talking to the press, yeah. to make clear that we have been helpful on in the negotiations and in your general policy. Yeah. Uh, and that we have been working together well, it, it would remove this slight uh, ambiguity that yeah. he detected yesterday. Aha. Wenn Sie mit ihm sprechen, dann äh, sagen Sie ihm nicht, äh, dieser Eindruck ist jedenfalls äh, objektiv falsch, auch wenn er subjektiv bei Ihnen bestehen möge und ganz sicher nicht beabsichtigt. I will see him in a few minutes, and yeah. I'll, you can be sure I'll make this point. Yeah. And I will see you and Rush later today. Yes. Uh, I, I, Rush told me he might be come later. Uh, er, er sagt, er sei also verpflichtet dazu, zu diesem Oh ja, mit dem Kanzler. Ja, ja. Sie nicht. Ich muss nicht. Gut.
Gut, dann so um 5.15 Uhr. 5.15 Uhr. Gut, Egon, and this we treat as a private conversation Absolut. between us. Absolut. Ich sage dem Kanzler gleich Bescheid. Good. Many thanks. Danke auch. Bye. Bye. Please. Swords, please. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Do you have a copy of Witness in there, the the book, or do you have a or or of those uh, hearings? You, you remember that somebody sent me a copy of those hearings. You know. Let the, me see where they were put. I'm afraid they've been just sent out. Huh? Right. Well, they they may be. Um, well, all right. You probably don't have it. Okay. Well. I Get me Lucy Winchester, please. Segway, hmm. please. Thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, how did the news play? Well, uh, uh, the media, uh, Salzburger was on, he returned to Europe, so he came back and got his lecture, but uh, uh, that was on ABC and NBC. Uh, CBS uh, had uh, Maxwell Taylor on. He did a very effective job and uh, made the points about the secret documents and uh, uh, how government must be able to communicate confidence, and sort of downgrading the thing. But uh, uh, the Salzburger thing sort of uh, came against us a little bit. Uh, Hard K. Smith had an interesting editorial. But, uh, in terms of uh, Salzburger, he yeah, but is it, but the thing of it is, on film, he looked like a man who sort of was on his way to court. In other words, that's the impression that came over the, the two. In other words, he looked sort of cornered. And although, you know, he was making the point that it was our opinion that no, uh, by printing this material, no uh, American troops were endangered and it was not uh, against the national security, he had sort of a defensive air about him, which I think played to uh, played to our advantage. But this evening there was still still a little bit of a focus on the uh, on the uh, uh, censorship of of uh, I'll say the, the overall the, impression was what negative or positive? Well, uh, I'd say the overall impression to the to the public in relation to the situation was not negative toward us. But I wouldn't want to say it was positive. I'd say it was sort of in so between, blurred. and it's kind of right. sort of blurred. And, and uh, That's all right. <clears throat> yes, sir. On ABC and NBC, it was blurred. On CBS, Maxwell Taylor did a very effective job. I thought. How did uh, what did Smith say? Well, Smith made the point. Uh, as a reporter, I have to say that uh, I think that material like this, when it falls in the hand of a publication, should be printed. He said that people lose sight of the fact that there are contingencies plans, there must be contingency plans. And he said the New York Times report suggests that there was un only one party to the conflict. He said you have to keep in mind that during this period, over the last four, uh, over the four years preceding this period, the communists were making a move of open aggression against South Vietnam. And he said that side of the story is not told. He said uh, uh, contingency plans must have must be developed by a government, and they were belatedly being developed by uh, by the uh, United States government during this period in history. So he said he would reserve his judgment until the uh, emotion of the moment cooled down. That's, so I thought it was. Uh, that's, 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 well, that's fine. The, uh, <laughs> the, as far as I know, you don't think that uh, changes our plan? No, sir. I I think uh, I think uh, I think we should still continue to assess it. Uh, tomorrow, and then I think uh, in Rochester, I think that would be a good, good, a good uh, uh, format to put it in perspective. Because also uh, there will be the court testimony coming up here too, which will, uh, which will again put our. our that here. will not be public. I, I don't know. It's not. It seemed to me from Marty and that it, it, it would be. Would be. I'll have to I'll have to check that again, but it, it was my impression in talking to Marty and that that it, it might be public because he was referring to the fact that McCumber was going to testify, and that uh, that would be uh, would testify where? Well, uh, in the hearing. Yes. Well, 
ماهی چی بکنم ما کم بری هست به یک روزی چیز به یک مطریال آن به یک مدرن هاتی و به کورس پلای دیس افکتر دا که پلای یا سر پلای دیس افکتر دی دی آل مکن او ابسلوتلی از افکتری and uh, <clears throat> CBS again uh, I think it was CBS had no on well, and he was uh, fairly you know. what do you say well he made the point of the various amendments the various ten amendments that had been uh, added and that uh, this was a, an unnecessary attempt to tie the president did he, did he tie it into the previous <coughs> administration of the knowledge Maybe they didn't carry that part of it. I didn't, I didn't see him make that point. At the point, the point that needs to be made. Yes, sir. We're checking, and, and we should have for you tomorrow, the information. And they're also checking on the Korean, uh, the Korean war information. Right. The, the initial report I get that is that none of the material from the Korean war has been published. And that... Uh, Uh, although the State Department has declassified uh, uh, their documents relating to World War II up to 1946, uh, they have not declassified uh, uh, intelligence information and uh, uh, covert uh, operations during the uh, during World War II. But we're putting that down, <clears throat> and uh, we are going to see if there is material from World War II that has not been declassified, which parallels the material that the New York Times has in relation to, to Vietnam. Oh, we have that just to, we'll have that tomorrow. Just as a sort of uh, back in the position. Okay, well. Now, the Sun-Times, uh, the Sun-Times thing, which is, 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 I'm sure you recall, but I didn't. Apparently, uh, the Sun-Times was about to print the uh, movement of the Japanese fleet, which would have indicated that the United States had broken the code. And the United States government apparently uh, obtained a sealed indictment against the Sun Times at that time. But uh, the government was checkmated because if we would have moved with the indictment, it would have uh, indicated to the Japanese that we indeed had broken their code. Of course, that was Mark Mark Kern had to do with the situation. That's right. But even in that case, they did not print the document. They simply were printing material. That uh, was contained right. in in the in the document. Well, if any Congress had about it, they would say it's so. Well, I think they've been pretty well tied down with this uh, McGovern Hatfield thing, which uh, which uh, has just uh, has blurred over a couple things today. We had some good victories in the House, for example, the attempt to. Uh, Uh, either cut down or delete some ABM money, which lost today but in the house. So that was a big report. But uh, the, the Hill information was pretty well absorbed by the right. by the McGovern Hatfield. So, well, the McGovern Hatfield thing is a significant thing. So, so I'm looking for it. Yes, sir. And in, in, in all cases, it was referred to as a, as a victory for the administration. Set a date and uh, this many suggest how the president to handle it. Okay, okay, sir. Hello? Mr. President, I have been to the next call. Oh, yeah. And right. I wasn't able to reach Lucy Winchester. She didn't answer at her home. So, do you want me to try to find her for you? Well, maybe. Well, you could try for a full, not, don't make, you know, for the next. Hi, Dick. Yeah. Uh, are you going to call Lucy, and then will you let me know because? Well, know the thing is, she's. Uh, they couldn't reach her at her home, and I told her to try, try to track her down. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Sarah Lickman, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah, John, I'm just reading the uh, memorandum with regard to the grand jury thing. Uh, have you talked to Mitchell about it? Is no, I haven't. I thought I'd better clear with you first. Because yeah. I didn't know what uh, 
But you might have been talking with him about. No, I haven't talked to him about it. No. I'll I'll give him a call tonight. Fine. <laughs> well, what? Uh, how does a uh, your thought is uh, uh, to? I mean, this is a question. I mean, the delay is one thing. I think in 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 terms of uh, of. Uh, Reconsidering whether we go ahead with it, of course, is something else. That's something that uh, has profound implications. Sure. No. <clears throat> I understand. Uh, it just occurred to me today as I read the pleadings yeah. that uh, there was a possibility that we could get the kind of an adverse finding on the merits yeah. in this uh, right. hearing that, that uh, we really ought to have a chance to take a look at. If we once launch that grand jury and then... Yeah. Get an adverse ruling from the court and stop it. Then I think we've got a, a bad well. Face uh, on. What does it really get down to? If you delay it, does that mean the times goes ahead and the uh, the uh, temporary restraining order apparently applies for four days only? Is that right? It, it expires uh, by its terms uh, uh, Saturday at noon or one o'clock. So they'd go ahead and print. They'd print the Sunday edition anyway, regardless of what the grand jury did. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about what they print now. Uh, the point is, you don't want to have an adverse. Uh, I don't want to appear to be calling off a grand jury in mid-flight. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Well, have you talked to uh, Marty and about it? No, I'll give uh, I'll give John Mitchell a call. And Whoever you uh, think is really in charge, you know, you might call right. and chat a bit about it. All right. It's, it's I agree with you. It's important not to have an adverse court ruling right in the face of all this. But. Uh, well, we, I get his. Ass. We have to go. Naturally, we have to go forward on the uh, one way or another on the not only on the times, but on the person who uh, obviously the FBI thing can go forward. I understand. Right. That that is going forward, is right. it not? That's that's very vigorously underway. Well, don't you have to? Now, on that, does that require a grand jury, or how does it? It would, uh, you see, but uh, uh, there is any reason why they can't go ahead and finish their investigation and then convene right. the grand jury on Monday instead of on yeah. Thursday. And uh, let, then you'll know what the court did on the TRO. In effect, in effect let the Times uh, go ahead and print. Oh, okay. sure. If we get an adverse ruling. I think the chances are that the court will grant a, an injunction yeah. uh, pending a trial on the merits. Yeah. Or he'll extend the TRO, one or the other. But uh, yeah. that's just a hunch because the issues are very complex. I'd be very surprised if he could dispose of them Friday or Saturday. Yeah, they are complex, I know. Yeah. All right. Well, you... Uh, I'll talk with him. Sure, talk to John. All right. Kick it around. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Yes, please. Operator? Miss Woods, please. Thank you. Miss Woods, sir.
Yes, please. Would you try uh, Lucy Winchester again, please? Yes, sir. Hello. Mrs. Winchester doesn't answer. All right, fine. You can let it go. Thank you. Yep. Miss Woods, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Please. Colson, please. Mr. Colson, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, how are things going? Well, I think uh, they got they did some good votes yesterday, didn't they? Sure did. And uh, I think we'll have another good one this afternoon on the Ned Z. Whalen. I think that'll get down by a resounding vote in the House. So that's it. Uh, huh? Yes, sir. I think it's... Uh, I was pleased with yesterday. It came better than I expected it to, really. Uh, the 55, 40, yeah. I thought we might lose a few more than that. Yeah. It's so close to last year that uh, it's encouraging. Yeah. yeah. Damned yeah. encouraging. What was it last year? 55, 39. Uh, so this was here. It's 55, 42. 42. So we lost three, really three votes Yeah. from last year, which is not bad considering the, the passage of another year. Three against, yeah. And the pressures. Yeah, that's right. And the, and the lobbying, which was pretty... Oh, the right. lobbying. Oh, my goodness. They threw everything. They had the lobbying, the veterans, the lawyers. Uh, the New York Times ran that thing for that purpose. No sure. question about it. I think the Times, actually, I think the Times story probably lost us two or three votes. I think Talmadge, a fellow like that, uh, was influenced by that. Do you? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, he indicated that to some people we had working on him, trying to bring his vote back into line. He... Mm -hmm. He just said that it discredited everything that they had done in the past, which, of course, is exactly why the Times did it. Exactly they why thought, they, they, did Thomas think we'd, we'd put it out? Oh, hell no. No, he no. just meant that uh, it had discredited oh, the nation. What the, the nation had done in the past. Well, the justification for going in in the first place had been discredited. Yeah. Which, of course, is what the doves want to use. Well, that's the way that, I mean, that, actually, if you read the Times stories, that's it discredits it if you read, read it from the viewpoint of the guy that wrote the, st the, the statement, but That's he's right. a left-wing fellow. Exactly. Although I, uh, I don't know, I'm, uh, I think the, the, uh, what, what's your, what was your opinion as to the, how are they, are we beginning to get any proper coverage on the Times thing? Are we getting a few editorials the other way or what? We are. Yes, sir. Um, it's been tough. Uh, we've talked to an awful lot of people and uh, 
don't want to take them. Well, an awful lot of them don't want to take on the issue of freedom of the press, which is not the issue. But of course our not. job is to articulate the distinction. Why don't you get this line, uh, that, uh, which, which would be a very simple way to do it. Uh, the Times is guilty of publishing, uh, uh, of knowingly publishing stolen goods. Mm-hmm. Knowingly publishing stolen goods. Uh, McClellan brought that up when he came in the day. He said they had a case down in the, down there that they're working on now in this committee. He said now when an individual, any individual who uh, uh, you know receives stolen goods is uh, guilty. That's right. He says here the Times received stolen goods, stolen documents, knowingly, but knowingly. The, the right. Times knowingly published stolen goods. We have. Uh, I, I think it's got to be hit on that. The other thing is not. I've, I've already. I'm, I know Ehrlichman is now trying to get this thing pulled together. But the other thing is that, from the attack standpoint, is to constantly hammer the fact that this is the Kennedy Johnson papers. Is that get going to? Are we getting that across? Not yet, Mr. President. I don't think we have well enough. We. Uh, I met with Ehrlichman for two hours this noon, and we've gone over a whole plan of things that we think need to be done. And I think that. Without any question, we've got to keep saying that, and all of our people on the Hill have got to say that, and be damn sure that people understand that we're not covering up something of this administration. Well, why? It. Why hasn't been said? It, it, it's, it's the obvious thing. Ziegler supposed he did say it. I think yes, he, he said it about ten times. But yeah, it's being said. Trouble. It's, it's, well, they are carrying it. Uh, no, I think they're carrying it. The trouble is that that on an issue like this, uh, it takes a while for the. It, it comes out as a big blur to the public. Uh, they're not focusing yet on what we're covering up. In other words, we're being accused of covering up. The public isn't yet focusing on what it is. And we have to make that point by continually talking about the Kennedy Johnson and trying to get people from that period to talk about it. Yeah, They should be uh, God, yes. fighting. And, of course, they're all in hiding cowardly. Uh, or like Clark Clifford, uh, probably privately cheering. Yeah. Yeah. George Meany has a very tough statement and uh, has agreed to give it uh, tomorrow, in which he really takes the times apart. And I think that'll help because that might stiffen the backs of a few of the. Well, who the hell is going to uh, get it out, though? I mean, he may say it, but they may not print it. Well, I think, no, I think they'll have to print it. It's a tough statement. Uh, I, yeah. I wrote it with Jay Lovestone this morning, so. I'm, I think if he gives it as it is, it'll get out. Now, we have some tough speeches up on the Hill that we've written, and Clark is getting those out. Uh, it'll, it, it, this is an issue that will stay around for a while. Well, the, the point is, I'm not concerned about the issue. I'm not concerned about it. I mean, I don't want, I told Holloman this morning, I don't want everybody around here to think, well, isn't it too bad? Oh, no, God, no. let's make something out of it. Well, it's an opportunity. This issue, must listen, the New York Times, believe me, the New York Times can be discredited for uh, in, uh, indefinitely as a result of this. That's in fact, correct. I'm going to, as long as I am where I am, the New York Times will never, never, never have another opportunity to have any stolen goods, I'll tell you that. In my opinion, Mr. President, yeah. uh, they, they, you, you they need... chose to take this on, and now we'll do it. Now, it isn't just the Times, but it goes beyond that. It goes to all of the disloyal people in government who do... Uh, who are tempted to get out and, and peddle a paper here and there, mm -hmm. either for profit or because they don't believe in a program. Right. It goes also to the integrity of government. It is far beyond the war. This is a terrible thing. Well, imperiling people's I think, lives. I think the term. Imperiling lives, imperiling our sources, imperiling our lines of communication, imperiling the president's right to have honest advice from his advisors. Right. Why, it destroys it all. Well, I think, Mr. President... And somebody's got to say it. They've got to get it out. It hasn't been said simply enough and often enough yet. I well, don't know what the trouble is. Repetition is the key. You just put your finger on it when you said often enough. The, yeah. We're saying it. It is, it is being said, and you can read it, but you have to look for it. But the more often it can be said, you gotta get the harder it can be hit. And uh, the, the, if people keep reading it, you know... You're judged not only by uh, by who favors you, but by your enemies. And the New York Times, I think, is one of the best natural enemies we can have. I think to be fighting the New York Times, you're on the side, especially on this kind of an issue. This isn't an issue of editorial judgment. This is an issue of violating a law and yeah. publishing stolen goods. You're publishing stolen goods. And let's put it that way. To be knowingly st publishing stolen goods. Now, I want you to get that line yes, sir. used. I want it used. Uh, get it to ten times. 
senators and congressmen this afternoon, will you? Yes, sir. Knowing that publish, get somebody to get it out on television. Now, that's the kind of thing. Get somebody to put it in an editorial. Well, that's the kind of thing. Then mail that around the country. Put it, put it, get it on some sort of print. Mail it to a hundred thousand people. Knowingly stop publishing stolen goods. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why aren't they guilty of something? That that reduces it to something that is simple enough for for the people to understand. Knowingly publishing stolen goods. Uh, and endangering the security of Americans. Right. And they, that's the second line, endangering the security of Americans. Yes, sir. Third, uh, well, uh, people don't care about the presidency and all that thing, but nevertheless, uh, the uh, endangering the security of Americans. Ehrlichman is working on some very good lines for you tomorrow, and uh, of course, I, I think that will, uh, if you choose to use them at uh, Rochester, is a is a marvelous opportunity. Well, it is, except the points. problem, Chuck, uh, I, have, I am inhibited to a great extent, I'm afraid, by the fact that the thing is in court. Don't you think so or not? I don't, Mr. President, but uh, Why not? that subject has to be thought through. For this reason, that what is in court is not an issue of someone's uh, guilt or innocence. It is not an issue of someone's rights being tried on the merits. It is an injunction hmm. as to which the executive branch of government must enforce the law and must use every resource to enforce the law. And therefore, hmm. comments by the chief executive of the United States who is charged with enforcing the laws hmm. about an injunctive action where you are seeking to enforce the law is quite different than commenting on the merits of a of a case that's being tried before a jury as to whether someone's guilty or innocent. That's that's a totally different thing. And I think that Maybe. I think the public would respect the fact that the President of the United States uh, is going to use every possible resource to prevent a newspaper from violating national security. And uh, even if it, it, it's the fact that it's an injunctive proceeding that makes me feel that you're that you're not treading on well, it's. it's it's got to be done carefully, and I think. Well, anyway, stay, uh, stir up some people on that, and we get them get them going. Well, I'll get this. Uh, yeah. I still have Lovestone uh, in the building. I'll get this line about stolen goods into the yeah. mini statement, and I'll get it up on the hill this afternoon. Get it used, repeated by everybody, knowingly, knowingly publishing stolen goods. That's the way to do it. Not stolen. See, our, our people don't know how to say anything in simple ways. Mm -hmm. Not in terms of knowingly publishing stole. Uh, I mean, stolen, stolen, secure documents. That's right. the way Henry would put it. No, that's correct but the way that knowingly publishing stolen goods that's it. people will get that they people will sounds like it. a thief sounds like something wrong well that's what it is and i think yeah. that uh, as i say i think we'll and come goods out. that belong to the people i mean no basically i think we'll come out on the right side of that issue because i think yeah. that the, the new york times will lose on this i'm always reminded of uh, reagan's comment when he was first running for governor when he was told that the new york times had had endorsed his opponent, and he said, "Well, they've they've only endorsed two people out of state. One is one is my opponent, and one is Castro, Fidel Castro, and it just had a hell of a good effect. I, I just think the Times is a great uh, well, enemy to hit on this, and I think they deserve it. Don't worry, we're we're going to hit them as far as this administration is concerned. As long as we live, we are going to hit them. Well, I, I mean, they're never going to have another opportunity. I cheer that. It's got to be done. Yes, sir. Be done, and they asked for it. Now that this is the way it's going to be. We've 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 been covering the country with editors. We've gotten a good reaction. I must say, I, there are some. Huh? I didn't mean to sound negative on yeah. that. With about fifty fifty, a lot of them say, "Well, it's a delicate issue when you're talking yeah. about the yeah. press and freedom of the press." And but others, some have, must be outraged. Good God, they wouldn't. Some of them wouldn't publish such a darn thing. No. That's right. A lot of them, a lot of them wouldn't. I mean, it isn't the war. Good God, there are a lot of people that are against the war that wouldn't do this. That's right. I mean, you could be against the war, but you don't break the law. And also, the other idea, breaking the law is right. never justified regardless of the cause. Right. No cause justifies breaking the law. Now, put that one down, will you? Yes, sir. No cause, which to wit, anti-war justifies breaking the law. Uh, no cause justifies breaking the law. Yeah. Right. And uh, let's, let's try to get at him. Well, you certainly have a couple of stars in those two young guys. Cause they, they look, incidentally, the, the two youngest-looking 25-year-olds I ever saw. But, <laughs> they, they, they look that way to me. And I, they are, but they are really attractive. My God, they uh, they ought to just come on like gangbusters. Huh? This fellow O'Neill, he was so in awe yeah. of you, Mr. President, uh, that he just couldn't come on as strongly as he does. He, I waited with he him. He came on strong enough. Well, he, he is just so eloquent, but he was... He 
walked away after that meeting, by the way. He walked away saying, that's that's the finest man. I, I love that man. I'll do anything for him. I'm going to start campaigning for him. And uh, if you could see that boy on television, you'd, yeah. you'd be awful proud of him. Gosh, he's, he's, yeah. uh, he's good on his feet. But Let's get him on. Uh, we'll keep him on. We'll, get him we'll, on. We had him on Face the Nation. We'll have him on the uh, Anything Raw Show. And, uh, we're, we're getting a lot of forums for him. He's, yeah. he's very much in demand. That's right. That's right. But you did a you, you, you did a marvelous job of picking his spirits up. He was he was about ready to quit. He just yeah, I know he's idealistic, but there's no reason for him to quit. That's when you start fighting harder. But you you got him with that one when you were quoting about uh, it's important. It's more important to be right than to be on the winning side. He's right, and that, and that, that's the way to be on the winning side too. But nevertheless, uh, they they are two great guys, and he sees just uh, just something. And I think too that uh, we'll just keep keep hammering this. You see, Chuck, I look upon this Times thing as an opportunity. Sure, it puts the you war do. in the front pages. Of course it does. On the other hand, have in mind this. It's a story that is not having the impact on the country. I lay you money that it is having here. That's Despite true. the fact it was on television is so much. You know what I mean? The television right. people make a lot of it. It's too confusing to the average guy. You know, the only problem is that it's getting across, the television tries to get it across as if we were covering up something about the war. Right. We're not covering up anything about the war. We're covering up who was responsible in that period. It's a fight between Johnson and Kennedy and McNamara and those people. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, they just got to say that. Well, that's that's the line that eventually will come out, Mr. President. I'm convinced of that. Uh, okay. Hit it hard. We'll be doing it, sir. Colson, please. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Colson, please. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. President. What uh, success has Bryce had, if any, with Johnson? Now, he, he, this is terribly important, and oh, I think Johnson's it is. got to step up to this, and he's got to step up to it on the basis that there's a hell of a lot going to come out on a lot of other things, too. Well, that's right. He, uh, the good of the country, if I step up, he's got to. Well, I think uh, Bryce called, he got Mike Manitos on the phone with him. Mike was very close to LBJ, as you know, and uh, they called Tom Johnson. Johnson called back, and they passed their message on that they felt very strongly that he had to defend himself and hold a press conference that his silence could be misinterpreted. Right. Particularly uh, after what Hubert said. That well, that's horrible right. thing. That's right. Uh, they also, why don't they tell him it'll help his book? <laughs> that's right. Good God. Uh, they got a call back, and they said that Rostow had been working with President Johnson on this, and that uh, Rostow was against his saying anything while the case was pending. No, the case. Oh, yeah. no, 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 that's just that's an excuse. excuse. It's an excuse. Uh, Rostow just doesn't want to get him involved and put all the blame on us. Exactly. That's all. That's all. Harlow and Manitos called back again at 4 o'clock this afternoon, and they said that they felt... As as friends of LBJ's, that it was imperative that he defend himself immediately, and that uh, he uh, it will not affect the case. That's right. Uh, they he's been a, he's been condemned in the public press. Right now, he is a villain. If he doesn't defend right. himself, he'll be to go down in history. And by God, I'll quit defending him if he doesn't get this message across. If yes, he sir. doesn't defend himself, I can no longer defend him. Yes, sir. Now that I want a, not. Have you got that down? Yes, sir. He must be told that I cannot defend him because tomorrow in Rochester I've got to defend him, but I can't do it if he won't defend himself. I think that's a very good point. Uh, 
Bryce can get that across to him tomorrow. Bryce is going to call him personally yeah. in the morning. Uh, give him overnight he's to think about it. Got to make it clear. And uh, tell Bryce to call him tonight. He's got to call him tonight. All right. is, he's got to get ready. He's got to say, look, the president's going to Rochester tomorrow. He's going to speak out on this thing. But the president cannot defend you unless you will defend yourself. All right. That will suggest to uh, LBJ that that you've talked to Bryce, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That I've talked to him, and I think he's got to defend himself. I'm willing to. De- I'm going to defend him, but he's got to defend himself, or I can't do it. I can't sit up here and take the brunt of all this without his defending himself. Well, Nobody I- else is speaking up. Clifford isn't speaking up. Oh, McNamara no. isn't speaking up. Bundy is cracking him. Humphrey is slaughtering him. Right. Muskie is killing him. Rusky, uh, Rusk is refusing to talk. Teddy Kennedy is saying, "Go ahead." Rusk isn't speak. talking. Rusk. What, is, what does Teddy say? Teddy says. I don't mind. Go ahead and release all the papers involving my brother. It won't bother me. Let history come out. Let, uh, let the chips fall. He's uh, yeah. being the... Uh, yeah, because he knows damn well the New York Times will suppress the type on that's right. on Bob, on Teddy that will hurt him. That's right. Exactly. And on his brother. On Jack. Son of a bitch. Well, there, that's a, it's really a, cr- a cruel thing, but we're going to get out some papers. I, I read the act to Henry. He's going to get out the stuff on the murder of DM. Mm-hmm. And we're going to put it out. Henry has that, and we should find a way to get it out at the right. Well, he doesn't have it. He doesn't. He has it, but he won't put it out. He does. He's embarrassed. Well, there'll be uh, there'll be ways that we'll get out. I heard that today, which is strictly grapevine, that the Washington Post had all of this and, and intended to start publishing. So that that may well happen. Uh, right on, the, te- watch, watch on. on the next chapters, the next yeah. Uh, sequels. Yeah. Uh, one way or another, that will get out, Mr. President, I'm sure. We'll see this does. What a depraved thing that these papers would just just uh, publish things without regard to the national interest. Well, it is. We, uh, the Teamsters are seriously considering, uh, this is very off the record, but they're seriously considering uh, uh, stopping delivery of the New York Times. If Oh, God, if they would, that would be great. Wouldn't that be marvelous? Well, they're, they're, they're giving it some very serious thought, and uh, yeah. that just might have a hell of an effect. If if yeah, their argument right. is, if the New York Times can judge what is national security, so can the Teamsters. I tell them, that, let them know that, you know, so, in a confident nice way, way that... Nothing will be more appreciated. Well, I uh, believe me, there is nothing that could be more effective. I mean, stop these bastards. Put it to the. Let them know that the folks are not on their side. Well, that would show them that the people just aren't going to put up with this. Uh, I think we we have a chance of getting them to do it. They seem pretty receptive. And right. I, but now we've got to get Johnson to go on the press conference. I'm not going to. Con- I can't continue to defend him. I'm defending him. No, I agree. I, Connolly said in this NSC today that he says they're blaming Johnson. He's on the Pernell. Is there blaming the president? They don't know who else president. That's correct. And, well, that's, and uh, that's, this thing has not gotten across. You know, Ziegler said it and everybody else, but nobody's gotten it across that it all happened to Johnson. This is not us. Well, exactly. And uh, that's exactly why this morning I, I got very worked up over this and talked to Bryce, because it seems to me that if, if Johnson starts defending it, at least mm-hmm. shifts the focus back to the Johnson administration. He's got to defend it. He's got to defend it. Or... Put it this way to Johnson. Either he defends himself or I have no choice but to uh, take another, uh, but, but, but to let the chips fall where they may, just use those terms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have no choice. He's got to defend himself because mm-hmm. I cannot do it. I cannot carry this load unless he will do it himself. He's got to defend himself. I don't want to blame him for the war. I don't want to blame him for these decisions. But if he doesn't, I have no choice but to go in the other direction. I, and put it that way. I no. kind of think that will have an impact on him because I'm sure, uh, yeah. according to Bryce, he is terribly upset. The Texas papers are giving it very heavy play, and uh, he's apparently reading the papers and throwing yeah. them around the office and just yeah. upset as hell. But he's got to say, the president wants to defend you. Mm-hmm. I defended him. Uh, I'll defend him with regard to getting into the war. I defend the fact that he, whatever he knew, that he wasn't lying. I don't think he lied. I think this is just a contingency plan. But if he will not defend himself, I will have no choice but also to refuse to defend him, and I don't want to do that. But he's got to step up and defend himself Saturday, or and I've got to know before I appear before the press on Friday afternoon. Now, I've got to know by tonight. Now, you tell Bryce to get off his ass and do this now. I'll do it, and okay. then I'll get the message back to you, sir. Hi. Right. 
Yes, Mr. President. Colson, please. Yes, Mr. President. Hello. Yes, sir, Mr. President. I want a, a straight ultimatum put to Johnson. All right, sir. And the ultimatum is this, that tomorrow in Rochester, I'll have 200 of the Washington press car covering me. I am prepared to defend him and the system and the rest, but I cannot do it unless he is prepared to go on Saturday in a press conference to defend himself. I can't. Otherwise, I've just got to let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. I need to know. I need to know the night. I'm preparing mm -hmm. the press conference. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, I have I have reached Bryce, and he's on a line uh, holding for me, so I'll give okay. it to him this direct okay. and try okay. to get him through right away. That's it. I'll get back to you, sir. Yes, please. Dr. Kissinger, please. Thank you. Hello, Mr. President. Hello, Henry. I uh, I think it's important that you give Rostow a call. Let me tell you the problem. Uh, he's advising Johnson against doing a press thing. I think John, they've got to be told very directly that tomorrow I'll have 200 press in, in Rochester, that I am prepared and I intend to defend Johnson on this whole thing, but that I can't do it unless he's prepared to defend himself. And that uh, what they're trying to do, Henry, is just to let us take the heat on this thing. And none of their people are speaking up. Now, you call him and you tell him that I think that... I think he's at Newport right now. I don't care where he is. Call him and tell who who is. Johnson? No, Rasta. You call Rasta. He ought to get a hold of Johnson. He's advising Johnson against this. Johnson ought to have a press conference. Now, we need it for reasons that you are, quite, I'm sure, quite aware of. Well, I'm aware of it, Mr. President, but I talked to Bill Jordan and Tom Johnson yesterday on the same topic. Yeah. And I just don't think the information is quite so correct, but I'll call Rasta this minute. You don't think it's correct that he's... I, do I don't think he's going to have one. I believe he has no intention of having one. I don't believe that Rasta is the chief obstacle. I just don't think he wants to have one. Why, I will call Rasta. Why won't he have one? Well, uh, what I didn't discuss at press conference, I said that there should be some statements and some activity from them. And they said since they were... The well, you ought to tell Rasta this, that... Unless he has a press conference, I'm not prepared to defend him. Not just as cold as that. They've just got to know. I, I'm not going to defend him. Why should I? Well, uh, I don't think you should defend Johnson anyway. I think you should defend the presidency. I don't think you should get into the issue. I'm not going to, but on the other hand, the on the other hand, it, it, it amounts to a defense of Johnson. You know, when you really get down to it, they say, I don't think this is proper, you know, to put one side of the case out rather and not up the whole case and that sort of thing. That's defending I'm Johnson. Sure, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I will call Rasta about the press conference, but I think you should you should uh, concentrate on this on on the theft of documents and on the unconscionable way of of attacking somebody. Uh, without giving him any chance of rebuttal, explaining where the documents came from and so forth. That, I think, is unanswerable. When we say out of context, then they'll say, well, why don't you supply the context? Well, I chat with Rostov a bit about it, see if he is... I will chat with Rostov. Ra Harlow's report is that uh, Rostov is advising against it, so let's see what he th says. Okay. I will call him. Because Johnson should go to the mat on this. He really should. He's, uh, he should speak up. Don't you think so? Well... Not for his interest, I'm but for ours. Sure. Uh, frankly, I think they're also eager to... Uh, well, it would certainly get, get a tremendous brawl started between Johnson and the press. You're right. And it'll get off of us. You see what I mean? It would get it off us on the immediate uh, problem, but it would also drag the whole issue down to the level of of both Johnson guilty or not. That's a hell of a lot better than having whether I was guilty or not, Henry. That's my point. We've got to get the... I believe, uh, I honestly believe that this episode can be turned into an asset if we go on the offensive and say that these people are deliberately undermining confidence in government. And that that's what it's all about, that what you are resisting is the uh, flouting of laws 
and the principle that the end justifies the means and the so-called higher morality. Uh, I simply don't find this, I just had Jerry Schechter in here from time. Now, I know they never write it the way they talk. Yeah, that's for sure. I immediately go on the attack. I, I, always, I said, now, I just don't understand uh, uh, how you people can even... He began by saying, how do we know you people aren't doing the same thing? And I said, don't you give me that uh, language. I said, how do I know you're not stealing papers all over the place? And they, uh, they don't feel at all confident uh, of themselves. I have yet to meet a newsman who really is sticking to the times for anything other than guilt loyalty. But I may not see a representative sample. Well, I just let, I just want to be sure Rostow doesn't... Uh, but I will talk to Rostow and tell him... Well, I'll chat with him about it, see what he thinks, and let, me know, what he, and let, me, let me know what he says, right. okay? Please. Congressman Ford, please. Thank you. Mr. President, yeah. I have Mr. Colson asking for you now, and yeah. Bryce Harlow's in there with him, and Congressman Ford is en route home, and we left word for him to call All you, right, sir. Fine. All right, I'll put Mr. Colson on. Yeah. Mr. Colson. I thought I should report, Mr. President, Bryce is sitting with me. He has thus far been unable to reach uh, LBJ. He's out for the evening and won't be back until 1130. Uh, yeah. We've well. just decided best that he not talk to anyone else until he can get him personally. Yeah. And uh, okay, Henry's trying to reach uh, Rostow. Yeah, which, I showed him. Which will be another front to hit it on. Uh, well, we'll, we'll see uh, what they want to do. But uh, well, Bryce has the message. Uh, yeah. Well, that we very do well. the best we can. If they don't want to play, we understand. We we'll have to do what we want. What we have to do. Well, the reason for my call back to you, we won't be able to get back to you tonight. I, I think it was eleven thirty. That I understand. But right. first thing in the morning, we should be able to report back on on his reaction. Yeah. All right, fine, fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Congressman Ford, sir. Yeah. There you are. Hello. Hi, Mr. President. Well, the boys did very well, that they didn't they? They sure did, and uh, they came through in great style. We lost, uh, I think, twenty-one or twenty-two, and uh, we won by ninety-eight votes, which is a better margin than we won on on a comparable vote a year ago. That's really great, Jerry. That's a marvelous job. Our guys did real well. Right. Uh, right. So, uh, well, that's really great, and uh, that what the Senate vote is really very heartening. Well, it ought to tell the enemy that uh, all this division is yeah. it's superficial rather than real. Yeah, well, it but also shows that uh, the men that, that lead uh, are not going to just follow polls and all the rest. They're going to stand up, and we're ready to, uh, you know, to... Uh, negotiate from strength rather than uh, division. Well, our guys did a good job, and I think if you had the time, a call to Eddie Hebert would be yeah. very uh, appropriate. Yeah, I see. Uh-huh. He, you know, led the fight, carried the bill, and uh, yeah. without his total cooperation, yeah. we would have had trouble. Ha! Yeah. I'll, I'll be sure that uh, I'll give him a call. Yeah. That well, was a good uh, presentation this morning, I thought. Well, we, uh, we, uh, I think we got them shook up a little on that. Yeah. And now uh, our people should really ride this issue, you know. We're not in a partisan way, but we can make it our issue. After all, uh, uh, the uh, this is, and, and mainly just to not let it just be zeroed in on Vietnam. It's a national issue, and it'll be here long after Vietnam, and we're going to fight the drug traffic. Well, uh, it'll yeah. have a big public response. And uh, because, as I put it, it's public enemy number one. Let's just think of it that way and crack it. That's right. Right, right. Now well, we, we just got to win uh, HR1 and that, <laughs> but we'll take that up next week. Uh, that's next. Well, the, uh, what do you think of all this hullabaloo about the New York Times? Isn't that the goddamnedest thing? <clears throat> well, uh I have mixed emotions in some respect. I just soon oh, yeah. publish. Yeah, I know, I know. It it, uh, it really exposes the other side, I understand. But, but that's not right. But as you know, what they did, though, they, they, they really are trafficking and trafficking and stolen goods. Sure. That's and right. uh, hurting the country. Boy, I'll tell you, they, they lost me with that one. Well, 
uh, it doesn't do any of their people any good, including Hubert, etc. Yeah, Hubert's really crawling, isn't he? <laughs> I think we ought to just sit back, uh, other than the legal issue. Yeah. We should sit back and... Let them fight. Let them uh, explain. Yeah, right. Okay, Jerry. All right, thank you, Mr. Great. President. Great. Okay, good night. Yes, Congressman Bear of Louisiana, please. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Congressman Bear. Hello? That was a Lulu today. Yeah, I want to tell you that was a great job you did. Everybody tells me you really smacked him. Well, I appreciate it. Well, and, I appreciate uh, your call. And you, you know, it didn't come within 100 volts of us. I just couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe it either. When I uh, heard it, that we got over 90, uh, I mean, uh, over 90 uh, majority. We got we beat we beat them bigger on the ABM this year, and we beat them last yeah, year. That's terrific. And the final passes was 335, I think, to fit. 331 to 58. That's right. Not a single amendment. The only amendments that, that, that were put on were the two we put on, two committee amendments. Right. And we beat them down on everything they tried. Right. That's great. We beat them down on the B1. We, we beat yeah. every, everything. That's really great. Well, that's a marvelous job. Well, it's nice to Marvelous job. Right. Well, that's and great. I do that's appreciate great. it a lot. Well, that's uh, we got to fight for the right things, you know? <laughs> You got a fight book. Yeah, you know, after after our experience, <laughs> after the, can write a book. <laughs> after our experience, I'm just thinking uh, when I was thinking of the shameful New York Times thing of what we went through so many years ago. Oh, I was just wondering, you know, uh, uh, what in the world does it do responsible publishers think about to put out tr trunk loads of secret documents? It's, with getting, it's getting waste every day. It's awful, isn't it? It's getting uh, awful. I mean, there's I mean, no responsibility. And it's a uh, the, I mean, as I said, it's no skin off from a political standpoint. Part it's no skin well, off no, of our back. As, as, I think as far as this, yeah. this latest thing that's yeah. happened yeah. in your favor. Yeah. But, but we get no comfort out of that. It will destroy the presidency. It can hurt somebody to the next guy coming along. Uh, that's what they're trying to do, too. That's exactly what they're trying to do. Yeah. No, well, no, 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 it's a bad well, we'll, we'll fight it all the way. And I'm telling you, I've told Mitchell, by God, we're going to find the... We think we know the guy that did this. He's a fellow that worked over as Ellsberg, who worked in the Defense Department. And by golly, we're going to get him, and he's going to go to jail. That's the only thing to do with that's it. That's right. He's got to go to jail for this. That's the only thing to do. That's right. Well, I'm John Seedy anyway. Yeah, too. <laughs> Good to see you, Eddie. Good to see my colleague. Bring, I bring him along with me all the time. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Right. Thanks a lot for calling. Yeah. Dr. Kissinger calling you, yeah. sir. Yeah. You are. Hello. Mr. President. Yeah. Hi. I test Reed Strastow. Yeah. And uh, he's now willing to support his statement. Yeah. And uh, we talked in general about what it might contain. Yeah. Uh, and he and Jordan are going to draft it tonight. Yeah. Uh, I have also talked to uh, Harlow and uh, Colson. Yeah. Colson. And I have my doubts about a presidential statement uh, by chance because you might be better off fighting this one alone without uh, the ally having him as an ally. But what I thought, Mr. President, if you agree, is that we might talk it over at our staff meeting tomorrow. All right, fine. And then make a recommendation to you. In the meantime, they are drafting the LBJ statement anyway, so nothing is being held up. All right, fine. Yeah, they can't reach him tonight, I understand. That's so right. That's fine. But they are, they will have a draft statement for him in the morning, and yeah, right. we will then be able also to make a recommendation to you. Yeah. And if you want it, they'll make it. All right, fine. fine. So that's fine. Let me know in the morning. Okay, right, Henry, thank you. Ziegler, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Ziegler is at a restaurant, sir. Uh, get Mr. Hollow then. Please. Surely. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, uh, I was wondering how the news came out tonight at it on TV. Do you know? No, I don't have the. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't see any of them. I can get it and give you. No, no, I, I called Ziegler. He's out. That's all right. I'll get it in the morning. But uh, we'll uh, check it out then. We're, uh, I still don't have John's stuff yet. Apparently, they're still working on it. But I'll look at it in the morning. See what he uh, suggests. Hi there. 
Johnson go back? Did you get a report back on the uh, Johnson? Yeah, Johnson. Yeah, yeah. I talked to Colson and also to Henry and so forth. And they're going to talk about it at the staff meeting in the morning. Give me a recommendation after the staff meeting. Perhaps uh, it may be that uh, John is waiting for that before he gives me the recommendations as to what to say. But uh, that's right. I I'm not going to say too much. No. Something. So it's a it's a tough question as to know how much to say anyway. You know what I mean? It's a one of those things where you can jump in and hit the thing, but uh, where. Did he raise? Did he raise the thought with you of reading it? Not yet, no. But he because I was discussing it later this evening. That well, the tr thing if he wants it, anything done, Bob, I got to see it. That's the problem. Yeah. It's now nine thirty and there's nine thirty-five. It's not here yet. But what you want to do? Read a statement to him on television? Well, question of whether on television or not, but but. Uh, to read it rather than just well I won't read it I'll just issue it then I'd prefer to issue it rather than read it I think that's much better I mean reading it reading it is not is not a good idea I mean I don't think that's particularly effective to read something on that it's just not good at all I mean if he wants to issue if we want to issue a statement that's fine but uh, I, let me put it this way if I read something uh, before a group like that then it uh, Elevates it to the standpoint of a presidential statement and all yeah. that sort of thing. I just rather just low key it than just issue the goddamn thing, let them run it, and then I'll just talk about the domestic things. Mm -hmm. But that's that's my view. No, I don't, I don't want to sit up there and talk about revenue sharing and welfare and the rest. Of it. No, I want to read you a statement about the New York Times problem. You know about this whole issue that has arised, risen. risen. They, they, we we get into this. Uh, we're, we're we're falling into that too often. I think as a say, well, it's because it's the easiest thing just to read something, you know, and it just takes too much away from getting it across to the people. Well, well, for example, I'm sure that Bud and the rest would rather that I had read that thing on drugs today. No, I don't think but, so. But uh, that isn't the way to do it. I mean, you, I, I made the point better by talking for a couple of minutes. And oh, yeah. No, I don't think, don't anybody, you think so. Yeah, absolutely. And, I don't uh, think anybody any question on that. Yeah. The argument for reading this, I think, was was because it's, Involves a legal case well, because it involves a legal case. Then the thing to do is to issue it, not read it. Then mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know what I mean. I just don't like to sit up there and read something. Mm -hmm. uh, what the hell good does it do to read it? Uh, that is, if it's, if it's a statement, but just issue a presidential statement on it. That is, I'm not sure anything should be done anyway. What's he got? Is it just too long? Is that the problem? I'm not sure. Could be. Yeah. It, it was. That, that was. That was the problem earlier. I know to try to boil it down, and, and I know you and said, but you say they had four pages. That'd be ten minutes. Well, that's make, too long. Make the points and still. Uh, yeah, but I'm afraid, Bob. It's too legalistic from the way it's. I've heard about it so far. It's, you know, getting into all the, the legalisms, and that 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 isn't going to sell anybody. I don't think anybody gives one damn about the legalism. Well, that's absolutely right. That's that isn't, Bob, the point for me to make. Right. Well, if I'm going to do anything, i just got to go and make the point, look, this is not any of our doing. This is the, uh, we, but, but I have to protect, I have to do this because it involves the, the, you know, the ability to conduct the presidency and to conduct foreign policy. And that, you know, you know, you got, I really don't think it lends itself to reading because of that reason. If we get into all the legalisms, well, the laws, been passed and the law has been violated and all that sort of thing. Well, that that's what they're trying to get. get away. Well, I, actually, there wasn't much of that in it. It wasn't. There were some long words and and uh, it yeah. made more of a sure more of a case than they. Yeah. Well, I'll take a look at it in the morning. Fine. <laughs>
but I'm not going to stand there. I, I see nothing to be gained by reading to a bunch of editors a statement on this. That that's just doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't feel right. Uh, because then I'm getting too much into the legalisms. Okay. Okay, good. This is John Arlick. Did you give me a Clark McGregor, please? Thank you, sir. Coming on, sir. Just a moment, sir. Thank you. Hello. Hello, hello. Yes, John. You had something from Jerry? Jerry Ford thought it was a matter of uh, the highest uh, importance that the president uh, not wait to be uh, appearing to respond to the Congress, but that the president tender not later than uh, tomorrow morning. noon tomorrow. How would breakfast tomorrow be? Be perfect. Yeah, he's going to do it. Good. Uh, one other thought that I had, it might be advisable, John, to, uh, if he's going to tender these documents both to the Senate and to the House, to expand the Mansfield breakfast to include the big five, that is Mansfield, Scott, uh, Speaker, Ford, and Boggs. I don't know about that. All right. But I'll try. Well, I'm not. I don't feel strongly about it. I see. I didn't want the Speaker to feel that. Uh, no, but don't you have him positioned on this pretty yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah. If well, I, that's what I told the President that you said you had. Yeah. In other words, he's standing by, yeah. uh, really, and, and if, if I can call him the minute that the President has, has uh, you know, finished with, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want the, the press to come to the Speaker. I got you. What do you feel I got about you. the President's announcement? Okay. All right. Fine. We'll, we'll arrange that. All right. Thank you. Ron Hello. Hello. Hi, Ron. Yes, sir. Uh, did you get your story out all right? Yes, I think it's fine. We made CBS with the... Henry, with, uh, Henry Buck, you know, the right. Uh, CBS used the part of uh, just the other side. Uh, sure to get Seriously, seriously jeopardizing the negotiation. So, uh, that, that, that line... I want to lay the foundation on that because... Uh, Right. Well, I was glad that uh, Cronkite got that on the end of the show as, as a quote tag of the story. The wires moved that out too. Then we went. Then we issued the HR one statement. That was a good victory. I didn't hear about it. Well, HR one passed around.
Hey, Mike. Well, if they uphold them on the right ground, then the people can turn on this. If they uphold them on the ground, then it would jeopardize national security. The papers are going to look so good. Well, I, I mentioned that. You know, I think Bob's figures that he referred to today, there's a doubt. I think people out in the country uh, are a lot more concerned about mishandling the top secret documents than they are about the second people. Whether or not yeah, they want to. Do. Open war to come out today. Question. Well, I think I, th I think there's mixed reaction, but I think if you, if you ask someone uh, about the handling top secret documents, their emotion is going to go to handling the top secret documents because it, you know, it's, it's quite a big thing when someone thinks the United States government is a top secret. I think they automatically yeah, negative. Did that uh, thing of the British uh, get any play? I know? did not see that. It didn't get any. Uh, try to try to see that Klosky can't get that written something out of the state. All right, for columns and so forth tomorrow. We get to get that. Henry Kissinger? Yes. Hello? Mr. Kissinger, sir. Are well, you all resident? All ready for your trip? I'm getting ready. I just got home. I was in the office several hours ago. I'm getting things to go. Well, I'm getting ready to go. I'll look in on you in the morning before I go away. I won't see that. Mr. Kissinger, sir. Well, I'm I wouldn't be very conciliatory with Mansfield. I'm not going to be a goddamn bit conciliatory. On this, I'm going to say, Mike, you should know that the I would say Because what these people have done is unconscious. One looks at the combination of slippers. Papers and now that it is unforgivable because everyone who wanted to make a record had a chance to do it on McGovern Hatley. So they had their chance at it. And if it had stopped at that point, we would have been in good shape. Well, we played it the best way we could. We had no choice. I mean, it doesn't tire us. It's misinterpreted. Thank you.